If you have your Bible, take your Bible and open with me to the Old Testament book of Deuteronomy. I like the name Deuteronomy. How many of you know God Almighty still has the right to tell you what to do and what not to do? Deuteronomy. Hallelujah. I'm not preaching voodoo religion. I'm not preaching doo-doo religion. I am preaching the book of Deuteronomy. I am preaching thus saith the Lord. I am preaching thou shalt not. I am preaching the word of Almighty God. And how many of you know the moral law of God has not passed away? If it was wrong in 1921, it's wrong in 2021. If it was right in 1921, it's right in 2021. The book of Deuteronomy, really I'm preaching from chapter 5, but I'm going to read a few verses as a precursor in chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4, and I want you to notice verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 4, actually let's begin in verse 15. I, I'd like to read the whole chapter. I'd like to start and read the whole chapter. That's your homework. Let's, let's start for the sake of time. For the sake of your attention span, which a lot of y'all, it's the size of a peanut, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> My generation used to read. This generation likes to scroll and, and, and to swipe. We used to read the scripture and know the Savior. Today, they just want to know about screens. That makes me want to scream. Because where those streaming videos and those screens lead is a steaming lake of fire. Deuteronomy chapter 4 and we will start in verse 15. Take ye therefore good heed unto yourself, for you saw no manner of similitude. You saw no manner of similitude or similarity or a Xerox or a copy or an imitation on the day that the Lord spake unto you in Horeb out of the midst of the fire. And here's the reason you saw no similitude or no images or no likenesses or no idols or no statues. He says, lest you corrupt yourself and make you a graven image. I've been talking to you lately about corrupt communications, corruption, evil, filthy, wicked, nasty, perverted communication. How you type, how you text, how you tweet, how you transmit idols, images, likenesses, selfies, how you sext, how you speak electronically in this digital age. The Bible says we're not to be corrupt. We're not to walk in corruption. And what corrupts us is our evil, filthy, nasty tongue, both electronically and the real thing. It corrupts us. He says, lest ye Corrupt yourself and make you a graven image. These graven, carved, molten images lead to an early grave and they lead to a Christless grave and a Christless eternity. He says, lest you corrupt yourself and make you a graven image, the similitude of any. Notice he didn't say some or a few, but any figure. God's not into figures. God's not into copies. God's not into Xeroxes and likenesses. The likeness of any winged fowl that flies in the air. The likeness of anything. Notice he says anything. When the Bible says anything, it means anything. There's no exceptions. There's no escape clauses. It says what it says. It means what it, what it means. It, you are to take it literally. The likeness of any beast that's on the earth. The likeness. That's what a pick is. That's what a moving pick is. That's what an image is. It's a, it's a likeness that you like too much. Th these things are prohibited. These things are forbidden by God. God says, God forbid you get involved in idols, images, icons, and likenesses. This is the word of the Lord. Th this is not your teacher or your professor talking, even your parents talking, even your pastor talking. This is God talking. This is the word of God. This is the Holy Bible, the word of Almighty God that I'm holding in my hand right now. The likeness of any winged fowl that flies in there, the likeness of anything that creeps on the ground, the likeness of any fish that's in the water beneath the earth. Unless thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, 
And when thou seest the sun, the moon, the stars, even all the host of heaven should be driven to worship them and to serve them. Horoscopes, astrology, moon worship, moon gods, the sun god, the Greco-Roman pantheon and parthenon of gods. It is prohibited. Idolatry, mythology, legend, fable, fairy tale, fantasy. It is prohibited by the moral law of God. It is immoral. And listen to me, America, in your immorality, there is no immortality. Do I have your attention now? Don't worship them. Don't serve them. And now I want you to flip over to the Ten Commandments. But before you do, look at verse 24. Look at verse 23 to 25. I can't go to chapter 5 without getting it in context. Cults begin when scriptures are taken out of their context. The God con, C-O-N, the God con is when you yank scriptures out of its context. Let's get it in context to avoid cults in the occult. Look at verse 23. Again, the Bible is God talking to you. How do you know the will of God? By the word of God. Verse 23, take heed to yourself. Pay attention. Lest you forget the covenant of the Lord which he made with you and make you a graven image or the likeness of anything which the Lord thy God hath forbidden thee. What part of no don't you understand? America, when did thou shalt not become thou shalt? These principles of the Word of God apply to modern electronic telecommunications. Yeah, the word internet or computer or, or television or idle phone or website or app is not in the Bible, but the principles of the Bible that are eternal and that are timeless definitely apply to your demon, devil, idol devices. And when the Bible says, do not make a graven image, or the likeness of anything that certainly applies also to electronic images, electronic idols, electronic icons, electronic likenesses. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Why did the early Pentecostals, why did the old-time Pentecostals oppose television from the beginning? Why did the old-time Pentecostals not go to the movies? Why did they preach the holiness of God and oppose Hollywood? That is the reason. Because the Ten Commandments say what the Ten Commandments say, whether you like it or whether you approve of it or whether you accept it or not, it is what it is. Why? Why do you have to obey the Ten Commandments? Because of verse 24. For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. I'm going to talk to you today a lot about the fire. The fires of hell. I'm the last hell fire brimstone preacher alive in the world today. I'm the last true remaining Pentecostal preacher in the, in the world today. I'm not a charismatic. I'm a Pentecostal. That means I believe in holiness. That means I preach the Holy Ghost and I preach the holiness of God. Are you listening to me? You can't have the gifts of the Spirit. You can't have signs, wonders, and miracles without the holiness of Almighty God. And if you have manifestations without the holiness of Almighty God and a holy life, it is another spirit, another Jesus, another gospel. It is the Jesus myth, the Jesus legend. Your Jesus is not my Jesus because my Jesus sends the Holy Ghost, God, the Holy Ghost who teaches you the holiness of God and how to walk in righteousness and sanctification, living a holy life with every sin under the blood of Jesus Christ, every sin repented of and every sin confessed, not to a priest, not to a former Virgin Mary, but to the Lord Jesus Christ himself. The Lord is a consuming fire, a jealous God. When thou shalt beget children and children's children, and you shall have remained long in the land and shall corrupt yourself. Corrupt communications. Evil communications. Corrupt yourself. How? By making a graven image. Making. Or the likeness of anything. What do we make it with? Our hands. Your hands and your fingers are the electronic tongue.
young of the digital age and the works of your hands, your idols, images, and icons, the Bible says we are to repent of the work of our hands. We're to repent of making out. We are a generation of idol makers, idol manufacturers, idol marketers, idol maintainers, and idol merchandisers. And we must repent of idolatry because the idolater the Bible says shall not inherit the kingdom of God I didn't write the Bible but bless God I know the one who did hallelujah you say brother Mike you take the Bible literally absolutely the inspired infallible and inerrant word of God the likeness of anything because God calls it evil in the sight of the Lord and it provokes him to anger. Yes, the God I serve is angry. Yes, the God I serve is just. Joel Osteen doesn't preach the God I preach. Joseph Prince and, Jen and Joyce Meyer, they lead you to the fire of hell. Why? Because they don't preach the God that I preach. The God of the Bible is just. The God of the Bible is mad. The God of the Bible is angry at your sin, at your idolatry. And it brings his wrath. Romans 1 says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness. Why? Look at verse 28. And there you shall serve God's, the work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see, nor hear, nor eat, nor smell. And that's what we're doing today. We are serving the servers. Hallelujah. Not serving God. We are serving the modems, not serving the master and the maker. You are not the creator. You are not the maker. You are not that. There is one God. He is the creator and the possessor of heaven and earth, and you are not God, and you're not a God. Sorry to burst the bubble of Hinduism, and Buddhism, and Shintoism, and Zoroastrianism, but it is the truth that I preach Now, go to chapter 5 and verse 6. The Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments. I am, chapter 5, verse 6 of Deuteronomy. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out. God wants to take you out of sin. God wants to give you a new exodus from sin. Hallelujah. I'm preaching today's new exodus. Just as Israel had to come out of Egyptian captivity and bondage as slaves to addiction and sin, so God Almighty is bringing you out of sin today. You don't need another delivery from Bezos' blasphemous Amazon. You need to know Jesus Christ, the deliverer, glory to God of mankind. You need to be delivered from sin, habits, and addiction. You need to be delivered from lust and craving and wanting. And the only thing you should want is Jesus Christ. The Lord is my shepherd, Psalm 23 says, I shall not want. I'm the Lord thy God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. And he says, because I did that, then I, I'm going to give you 10 commands. And there are 10 requests. God asks nothing of nobody. God makes no requests. God did not give ten requests. He gave ten commands. And the first one, and the most important one, is what Jesus echoed in the Gospels. They came to him and said, what is the greatest commandment? He said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with some of thy heart, with a little bit of thy soul, with part of thy mind and a little bit of this. No, that's not what he said. Jesus said in the Gospel of Matthew, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy strength, with all that you have. And the second, love your neighbor as yourself. But you hide behind screens so you don't even know your neighbor to begin to even love your neighbor. That's why the American dream has become the American nightmare. First command, thou shalt have none other gods before me. And I'm going to comment a lot more on that as we go along. This is just my introduction. The second command. We know all about the second amendment, the right to bear arms. But the second commandment is more important than the second amendment. And he just echoes what he said in chapter 4. He says, thou shalt not make thee any graven image, molten image. Carved image. That means a statue. Amen. That means a statue that the Buddhists bow to are unscriptural. The statues of the saints that the 
Catholics bow to are unscriptural. They are prohibited. They are forbidden by God. So you ought to get out of those stupid voodoo doo-doo religions. It's all about what you do and how you make and craft your own gods and you worship the works and the creations of your hands. And you bow to statues of the former Virgin Mary and statues of a fat Buddha and statues of this and statues of that. That's doo-doo religion. That's voodoo religion. Get out of that. Repent of that. You have to repent of the sin of religion to know the righteousness of God. Religion is the first sin you have to repent of in order to be saved. You have to repent of the works of your hands. Hebrews 6.1 This is the first principles. The first principles of God that we repent from dead works. Works are the works of your hands. You think it makes you alive unto God but it's dead works. Hebrews 6.1 Repent from dead works. That's the beginning. That's the foundation of the faith. That's the foundation of the gospel. That's where it all begins. And it leads to justification by faith. He says, verse 8, Thou shalt not make thee any. Not just a few. Not one here that won't hurt you. Well, Brother Mike, I'm not worshiping it. I'm not bound. Yes, you are. If you're watching it, you're worshiping it. If you're, if you're possessing it, you're praising it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you have it, you're bowing to it. God says, don't make any. Don't possess it. That's the possession clause. Don't make any graven image or any likeness of anything. There's no exceptions to this. It is what it is. It says what it says. That is in heaven above, in the earth beneath, or under the water beneath the earth. Don't bow to them. Don't serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation of them who hate me. If you're worshiping and bowing to idols, images, idols, and icons, you hate God. And this is why there's a generational curse on you. That's why there's a family curse on your family. Because you have angered God. That's why your genetics are so messed up. That's why your DNA is so messed up. We call this the sin nature. We call this original sin. We call this being part of the lost sons of Adam's fallen race. This is the reason the world is literally littered with graves. This is why we have so many wars. This is why we have man's inhumanity to man. This is why we have abuse and rape and molestation. This is why we have sickness and disease like cancer and like AIDS and like COVID-19. It is the wrath of God against sin. That is the cause of all of the vicissitudes of life. But the cure, the answer is the shed blood of Jesus Christ on Calvary's Cruel cross of Golgotha. Hallelujah. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse or the penalty of the law. Having been made a curse for us. For it's written, cursed is everyone who hangs on the tree. That's Galatians 3 and 13. So that was my text. That was my text. But you know, they, they don't tell you that on television, do they? No, so-called Christian television, they, they don't tell you that. None of the networks. What is television anyway? I want you to think about television, the movies, websites, apps, based on what I just read to you in the Bible. I want you to apply the principles of the Bible that we just read in the Ten Commandments to modern technology, to high tech. High tech are the high places of Baal. Amen. It's neo-paganism, neo-heathenism. High tech and, tel and telecommunications is nothing more than the images and the likenesses that were just prohibited by God. Now, isn't it? Don't try to explain it away. Don't try to run from it. Don't try to make excuses. Don't try to say, well, it's okay for me to do it, but not okay for... No, it's a sin. It's a sin. God wants us to come back to reading the Bible. There are no pictures. Look at this. There's no pictures in the Bible. It's not a picture book. There's no pics in the Bible. Are you listening to me? We're saved by what we hear. The Bible is a vocal book and it is a verbal book. It is not a visual book. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus rebuked his generation that wanted to see signs, wonders, and miracles. That's why he rebuked doubting Thomas for wanting to see. Wanting to see. No, you're not saved by what you see. What is faith? Hebrews 11. The substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things 
not seen, not seen, not seen, not seen. Paul told Corinthians, he said, for we walk by faith, not by sight. The whole generation today is visual. It's what you see. It's videos, TV, movies. But that saves no one. God never called a preacher to preach on television for money. We are to read our Bible and fall on our knees and fall on our face and learn the art of intercession and quit worshiping our investments and worshiping our money. And what comes over Christian television is garbage anyway. It's not true. Garbage in, garbage out. But from evangelist Mike Dowd, you're going to get good in and good out. Now let me settle down a little bit and give you my introduction. What television and telecommunications tells are lies. And these lies are leading to a very hot hell. You know, I'm an evangelist. I deal with sinners. And I preach on all these various platforms and forums for only one reason. And that's to get the gospel out so people can get saved, healed, delivered, baptized in the Holy Ghost. But as I make these sermons, you can't help but notice what everybody else is doing on the platforms and the forums. I'm not blind. And I see people making videos of themselves. Come on now. Singing. Lip syncing. And they're doing it to worldly, ungodly music. And they're flaunting their flesh, drawing attention not to God, but to themselves. Look, we are only to sing to God. We are only to listen to praise and worship music that glorifies God. Secular music is a sin. Music was designed and created in God's original intent for one purpose and one purpose alone, to worship God. In spirit and truth, any other use of music is sin. I watch them not only singing or lip syncing to the music, but they, but they dance. They dance. David danced in the Bible, but he danced unto the Lord. He danced unto the Lord. Dancing was given so we can dance glory to God before Jesus. Before Jesus. Before Jesus. Hallelujah. We can laugh with God. Hallelujah. We can shout unto God. We can clap unto God. We can dance in the Holy Ghost. We can make a joyful noise, but it has to be to God and to His glory, not to our glory, to attract attention to Him, not to attract attention to ourselves. Are you listening to me, TikTok? Are you listening to me, Instagram? And while I'm digging my own grave, while I'm digging the hole deeper and deeper and deeper and burying myself and making you mad at me, let me just continue. Making with your fingers, your hands, crafting, developing, designing, engineering an image to sing animation, to dance, to lip sync, animation, algorithms, automations, AI. It's creating an idol. It's creating a visual image and a likeness with your hands. Hebrews 6 and verse 1. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works. What you're doing is dead works. And it's sin. It is idol making. And it makes you a worker of iniquity. <laughs> it makes you a worker of iniquity. I... Uh, <laughs> I, uh, you can't help but notice people that are funny. I like people that are funny. And I hear Larry the Cable Guy a lot, but look, you don't need Larry the Cable Guy. No. Nah. You need Mike the Cross Guy. Amen. You don't need Larry the Cable Guy. 
Because that cable is a cord around your neck. That satellite is a cord around your neck pulling you down to it's nothing but filth, lying, cursing, sexual in your window, cheating. Come on now. The Hollywood agenda, the New York agenda is not the agenda of God. You don't need Larry the Cable Guy. You need Mikey the Cross Guy. Larry the Cable Guy says, that's funny. I don't care who you are. That's funny. I don't care who you are. That's funny. Does your mom have big boobs? Well, it don't matter. See, that stuff is that stuff is vain. That stuff is sin. It don't matter. Does your mama have big boobs? That's funny. I don't care who you are. You don't need Larry the Cable Guy. You need Mikey the Cross Guy. Hallelujah. You, you don't need the nerds and the IT guy. You need New Testament intercession and truth. You know what IT stands for? You know what IT stands for? Information temptation. And Jesus said, lead us not into temptation. Television is temptation. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 13, lead us not into temptation. It is sin. Television is temptation. Movies are literally, listen to me, literally moving motion pictures, pics, which are images. They violate the second command that we just read because they come before God violating the first commandment too. Do you spend more time a day watching TV, movies, and streaming videos or reading the Bible, praying, interceding on your face before God and ministering to other people in the name of Jesus? Answer the question. If you put those things ahead of God more time than you do with God, then you have an idol problem and you need an intervention and you need deliverance and you need repentance and you need an old-fashioned altar, an old-fashioned mourner's bench to fall before God and cry and say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Beat on your breast. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Forgive me. Wash me in the precious blood. I repent of idolatry. And if you'll cry out to him, he'll cleanse you. He'll cover you with the blood of Jesus. And he'll conceal your sin. And he'll fill you with the Holy Spirit. Save you. And take you to heaven when you die. Hallelujah to God forevermore. I'm preaching the gospel to big tech. A big God is speaking to big tech. I'm delivering the word of the Lord to big tech. So listen up, Sundar Pichai. Listen up, Mark Zuckerberg. Listen up, Jack Dorsey. Listen up, Tim Cook. Listen up. Listen up, Michael Dell. Listen up. Listen up, Jeff Bezos. Listen up right now. Listen up right now to the word of the Lord. Google is today's graven images leading to a Christless grave. Movies are today's Molten images. Social media is our sculpted likenesses and statues that we worship and we likeness and we like too much. People talk today about processing, 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 processing. We don't need processing. We don't need processing. And word processing and word documents. You know what we need? You know what we need? We need the preaching of Almighty God. We need the word of Almighty God. We need the divine word of God, not your processing. We don't need your nerds. We don't need your IT guys. We don't need social influencers. God forbid. You know what you need? You know what we need? We need not social influencers. We need scriptural intercessors. That's a good place to say amen. I've heard them talking from out there in Cupertino, California. Apple. The most wicked, vile, raunchy, filthy, disgusting corporation the world has ever produced. Apple from Cupertino. And their commercials were like, oh, all this technology, all this, it just, it blows my mind. Let me tell you something. No, Apple doesn't blow my mind. Amazon doesn't blow my mind. AT&T, Alphabet, Google, it doesn't blow my mind. You know what blows my mind? You know what blows my mind? Almighty oh, God, Almighty oh, God, Almighty oh, God, boom. Boom, boom, he blows my mind. Hallelujah. 
He wasn't formed. He wasn't created. He had no beginning. He's always been. He always will be. He is omnipotent. He is omnipresent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is omniscient. Hallelujah. He is almighty. He is all-knowing. He is all-present and all-powerful. Glory to God. And he's called El Shaddai. Almighty God. Elohim. Yahweh. Adonai. Jehovah. He is God. The creator. And the possessor of heaven and earth. And there's only one of them. He has no peers. He is the peerless one. He is the priceless one. And he is who you should serve. He. He. In 1 Timothy 2.5, I love this verse. It says, 1 Timothy 2.5, there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. The man is not Buddha, is not Mohammed, <laughs> it's not Maitreya, it's not Allah, it's not the former Virgin Mary, it's not the Pope, it's not the Dalai Lama, it is the man, Christ Jesus, the man, Christ Jesus. And the Bible says there's one God, and only one, not two, not three, not a hundred mediators between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. You don't need the media, you don't need the media, you need the mediator, you don't need the media, you need the media. Mediator. Only Jesus can reconcile you to God. Only Jesus can grant you repentance. Only Jesus can give you redemption. Only Jesus can give you remission of sin. Only Jesus can give you justification, sanctification, and glorification. It doesn't come from a church. It doesn't come from an organization. It doesn't come from an institution. It doesn't come from a denomination like the Methodist or the Presbyterians or the Catholics or the Episcopalians or the Southern Baptists or the Assemblies of God. It comes from the person of Jesus Christ. And Jesus is not a religion. Jesus is a person. A person. And you need a personal relationship with Christ. Forget about your PCs. The PC you need is a person. Personal Christ. Hallelujah. <sighs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. I feel, I feel his presence. I, I'm just started. I, I haven't got through my introduction, but I feel God's calling me to give an altar call. Right now. We'll, 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 con we'll continue this tomorrow. Yeah. Every head bowed, every eye closed, all over America, all around the world. Let's have a prayer meeting. Let's have a time of prayer. I want you to get on your knees or get on your face before God right now. Unless you're driving a car. If you're driving a car, pull it over to a safe place and make that steering wheel an altar. And I want you to go. God, I thank you right now for conviction. I thank you as I preach the cross that the conviction of sin, righteousness, and judgment is flowing around the world and your conviction is flowing like a river. And now, Lord God, in Jesus' name, draw them, draw them to the bleeding side of Calvary. And I want you to confess your sin. As his conviction and contrition comes on you, I want you to confess. I want you to say, God, forgive me. And I want you to name your sin. Whatever sin God convicts, say, God, forgive me of this. Forgive me of that. Forgive me of lying. Forgive me of cussing. Forgive me of cheating. Forgive me for premarital sex. Forgive me for fornication. Forgive me for porn. Forgive me, forgive me for idolatry. Lord, forgive me. Forgive me, Lord. Wash me. Now say, Lord, wash me in the blood of Jesus. Wash me in the blood of Jesus. Oh, God, please accept me. Please save me. And now right now, all over America, I want you to repeat this prayer to God and mean it with all your heart. Say, dear God in heaven, I'm a sinner, I can't save myself. But right now, Jesus, come into my heart. I accept you and I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I believe you died for me on the cross. I believe you were buried and I believe you were risen from the dead and I believe you're alive. So come in right now. Hallelujah. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Heal me. Lead me. Guide me. Deliver me. And I'll ask it in Jesus' name. Believe and I receive it. Amen.
The Bible says there is joy in heaven, rejoicing among the angels, when one sinner repents. And I just feel led right now, before we close today, I'm just going to stretch out my hand right now. I'm going to anoint you with oil in the name of Jesus. And I'm going to lay hands on you in the name of There it is. I feel it right now. I feel the river of God starting to flow. It flows from the cross and the finished work that Jesus accomplished there. And no sin, no sickness, not the devil himself. No evil spirit and spiritual death cannot stand against the blood of the cross. The river of God is flowing. And whatever you'll need, circumstance, condition right now, jump in there. Here it goes. Jump in the river right now. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Jump in the river. Here's the river of God. In Jesus' name, be healed. In <laughs> There it is. There it is. There it is. Cancer's leaving right now. COVID is leaving right now. How that cart is out. Glory to God. It's leaving right now. Diabetes is hypertension. It's leaving right now. HIV AIDS is whatever sickness and disease. I rebuke every spirit of infirmity. I rebuke every spirit of the fear. I rebuke every spirit of religion and tell you to come out of God's people. Glory to God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Deliverance be. Healing be. <laughs> Right now, Bronda la Manti Rodos Elta. There's the river of God. Bicariandolo Mondala Vasico Rodos Elta. Bronda la Manti la Vacoronda la. Lift your hands. Just lift your hands and worship Him. Just lift your hands and say, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because there it is. There it is. Hallelujah. Though I plead the blood of Jesus Christ and I do spiritual warfare and I claim everyone for God in the name of Jesus Christ. If I can pray with you individually, counsel you individually, all you got to do is text me 24-7, 703-405-1942. I may not respond right away if I'm in a meeting, if I'm sleeping, if I'm preaching, but I will, I promise you, I will respond to everyone. I will call everyone back or text everyone back that texts me. 703-405-1942. What other preacher gives out his personal cell number? It shows I love you. I'm not here asking for your money. I'm not promising you a, a contribution if you give me money. That's, I'm not te preaching seed faith. Amen. I, I, I'm, I, I'm looking to bless you. Hallelujah. You pastors out there, people in charge of a convention, camp meeting, crusade, conference, that number is also how you invite me to come preach for you and hold a revival and have Holy Ghost revival. 703-405-1942. Hallelujah. Thanks for being with me today. Until I talk to you tomorrow, we'll pick up right where we left off. We'll continue this series. This is Evangelist Mike Dial. I love you. Jesus loves you. Remember, Jesus is Lord. Amen.